Intel's Core X CPU reviews are in. These new chips aren't horrible, but let's see if they're rising up to the challenge. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. It's funny because I somewhat started out wanting AMD to just stomp the floor on Intel, and the reason why is honestly simple. I know that's what you want to hear, and I definitely love being able to bring you what you want. It makes me feel great, you feel great, but obviously I want to tell the truth above all. Well, after going through tons of benchmarks, comparisons, discussions, and all that good stuff, I can just about say AMD does wipe the floor with them. Kind of. The main thing I want to talk about today isn't a roundup of reviews or going over tons of different specs or benchmarks. You've more than likely been inundated with it already. No, today I'm going to purely compare Intel's offerings to AMD's current ones, and I think that's been a discussion somewhat absent for today. It seems most people are content with merely comparing Intel's newer line to their older line, but that was only important back when Intel had the top tier market cornered. They don't anymore. And I just don't think it's a fair comparison. Just because their newest chip went down $700 from their oldest doesn't mean it's a great price when compared to the competition. Ryzen. Now I know what you're thinking. You can't do that! Intel's way more expensive and their enthusiast line is going up against the Red Ripper, not Ryzen 7. Well, random viewer who doesn't exist yet, you're absolutely right. But that's why I think the most valuable metric when comparing these two is the fabled price to performance. Of course, there are plenty of variables besides just performance and obviously Threadripper isn't out yet, so we can't have a pure dollar to dollar performance comparison. With that said, you can easily account for the variable of difference in price with some math. So first I want to get this out of the way. I seriously advise against purchasing the 10 core and probably even 8 core chips for gaming. Sure, games may utilize them one day soon, but it's a really tough call to make and I just don't really see it in the extremely near future at least. Now I could be wrong, but at $1000 you will absolutely be better off buying a better GPU, especially when today the $1000 chip provides less performance than say the 6950X in some games thinks its communication latency over threats. Whether the Acor chip could be worth it one day or not is possibly up for debate, but still ill advised. Okay. So when it comes to Intel's newest chips, I'm mostly covering the 10 and 8 cores since they seem to be the main chips sent out to reviewers. When talking about them, both chips perform quite well. There's a debate to be had on the fact that a water cooler is pretty much required to significantly overclock, but when it's achieved, it is impressive, albeit, at least for the 10 core unit, still quite hot. Now, when it comes to straight up performance, the 10 core is the king of the current consumer crop. It has very good single and multi-threaded performance and has an even better IPC overall than their last generation. The issue when it comes to the 7900X is that earlier discussion, price to performance. While it handily beats out the 1800X and multi-threaded workloads, it's also $1000. Overall it seemed the 7900X yielded roughly 30-35% to higher performance in benchmarks when compared to the 1800X. That honestly is not bad, especially in times where it just dominated. But an overall 30% increase in performance for a 100% increase in price is a tough pill to swallow for anyone, and it gets that much harder when comparing it to say the 1700 that can roughly get on par with the 1800X's performance, but is nearly one third the price of Intel's 10 core. Even if we take overclocks into account, which it's hard to find that many comparisons, but still. Let's say we gave Intel a 45% lead overall, it's still three times the price, and if the rumors on AMD's Threadripper chips are accurate, we could easily be looking at quite a bit better performance out of AMD for less. That's nothing to scoff at. With that said, to keep things fair, it is important to note that high clocks and overall instructions per clock, Intel tends to do fantastic across the board by offering somewhat the best of both worlds. But whether the price difference is worth it for you is purely based on individual needs. It's also good to note that Intel does seem to have somewhat rushed out the chip like AMD, so we could see performance and stability increase as the platform matures. So on to the 7820X. Intel's 8 core is a little bit of a different story. You're still only getting roughly 15-20% to increase in multi-core performance, which definitely isn't too bad coming from the 1800X, but it's a really hard pill to swallow at twice the price of the 1700 when, once again, it can get right at the 1800X's performance when overclocked. I really just think the biggest reason someone might want the 7820X comes down to its single core performance. If applications you primarily use heavily rely on higher core clocks, Intel's 8 core beast that seems to even get near the 5 GHz point might be the way to go. With that said, if mostly single core performance is your primary concern, you probably shouldn't be getting this. Really, as far as price performance, AMD certainly seems to take the lead, at least in most benchmarks. But I think it will really come down to Threadripper as to whether AMD ends victoriously, because that 
may not be worth $500 or more for many. If AMD can't offer similar performance at the same or less price, it might just be worth it for those few. Of course, I highly doubt Zen scales that poorly, but only time will tell. So what do you think of Intel's newest CPUs? To say they're powerful is certainly an understatement. One thing I definitely do want to mention as a passing note is to watch for Intel 7800X. There weren't enough reviewers to test it, but it does seem to almost be worth it when compared to Ryzen, even though it's 8 cores versus 6, just because the 7800X does have quite a bit higher clock speeds. My biggest issue is when having to spend so much on motherboards on the platform, but of course that's for you to decide. Either way, price and performance, it actually isn't bad. But are they worth the price difference, or is it better to wait for Threadripper this summer? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget I'm going to be working on that Ryzen build. If anyone's interested in sponsoring it, just send me an email at admin at gamermel.com. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.